Improving high school graduation rates is a crucial social issue. Students who graduate from high school are better prepared for higher education and even have higher life expectancies and expected incomes. Yet, every year in the United States, about one out of every five students does not graduate from high school on time. That's about 700,000 students each and every year. To address this issue for the past 14 weeks, we've been working with several partner public US school districts to develop a data-driven solution to identifying students at risk of not graduating on time. Our district partners are not only regionally diverse, they represent different student populations with very different graduation outcomes. Yet, they're all committed to the same common goal of helping their students graduate from high school on time. This starts with identifying which students are at risk. Some students may not graduate high school at all. Others may graduate, but not on time. Collectively, we call these students who either don't graduate or who graduate late, not on time students. Yet despite this common label, the students that are graduating late or not on time at all have very different outcomes and they need very different personalized interventions. To do this, to identify these students at risk, we started with the data provided by our partners. Some of this data represents grade level information, such as student absences, tardies, grades, and test scores. Other data represents static student information, such as demographic. Together, all of this information provides us with the tools we need to track a student through time during their time in the school. Given this data, we generated features, factors that we believe may be predictive of whether a student will graduate on time or not. Using these features, we developed models to predict and identify which students are likely not to graduate. With these models, we can predict which students may or may not graduate on time. These models produce a list of students prioritized by their rank their, their urgency of attention. We evaluated these models based upon how well they prioritize students at risk. An ideal model would rank above all other students not at risk, those students actually at risk. So if, for example, we took the top 10% of students predicted at risk by a given model, we would hope that all of these students would actually need interventions. Based upon this evaluation, the results that we produced over the summer seem very promising. Above, we illustrate results for one of our district partners that demonstrates that our models perform well above the current existing baselines, even given the limited set of features we developed over the course of the summer. But our work doesn't stop there. Using this information, schools can develop tools to identify the factors that contribute to students' risks. First, schools can identify students given different categories of risk factors. Next, they can drill down and identify the factors that contribute to an individual student's risk. And finally, they can roll up and compare how, about how their school compares to other schools within their district. Using this information, schools can learn more about the factors that contribute to students' risks and use this information to provide more effective interventions that not only improve students' graduation outcomes, but their lives as well. Thank you.